In this session, we will be studying about the secondary and mature ovarian follicles, corpus luteum and uterine tube. First, the secondary ovarian follicle. A secondary ovarian follicle is characterized by the presence of a cavity called antrum folliculi and that's why they are called as antral follicles. During the development, during the development, liquid folliculi fills the crescent shaped antral folliculi. At this stage, certain granulosum are composed of 3 to 5 layers around the antrum. Cumulus luforus and corona radiata are also formed. This schematic diagram of secondary follicle shows primary oocyte, zona pellucida, corona, corona, corona radiata, antrum, granulosa cells lying on the base membrane, theca interna and theca externa too. Now what is cumulus euphorus? As the fluid, as the fluid in the antrum follicular increases, the oocyte now lies within a heap of granulosa cells that project out from the follicular wall into the fluid-filled antrum follicular. This heap of granulosa cells is called as cumulus euphorus. Now what is corona radiator? Within the cumulus euphorus, a layer of radiating granulosa cells surrounds the oocyte outer to the zona pellucida. This layer is called as corona radiator. Point to remember, most of the secondary follicles undergo atresia, but at least one of them continues to develop further to give rise to the mature ovarian follicle. Mature follicle is formed when granulosa cells proliferate further and there is a constant increase in liquid follicle. This tertiary or graphin follicle, graphin follicle is a large cystic swelling measuring 2 to 3 cm. It extends to the full length of the full breadth of the ovarian cortex and produces visible bulge on the surface of the ovary. Before ovulation, stratum granulosum thins out and oocyte is released on the graphin follicle as the graphin follicle ruptures. This is the schematic diagram of a mature graphene follicle. Now the corpus luteum. After ovulation, the ruptured follicle does not degenerate at once, but it's transferred, transformed into a temporary endocrine organ called the corpus luteum. It is named so because it appears yellow to the naked eye in the fresh unstained section of ovary. The luteinizing hormone high levels lead to morphological changes such that the cells in the stratum granulosum convert into granulosa lutein cells and the theca cells turn into theca lutein cells. It has two types of cells, granulosa lutein cells, which are most numerous, larger and pale staining, having granules of lutein, theca lutein cells, which are smaller than the granulosa lutein cells and, are, and stain intensely and are chiefly located in the periphery. This figure shows human toxin myosin stained section of compost lithium in the ovary. This slide shows theca lutein and the granular lutein cells clearly and how they are arranged. Now the uterine tubes. These are long paired muscular tubes with two ends, one extending to the wall of uterus and the other opens into the peritoneal cavity next to ovary to receive the ovum. It functions to receive ovum, provide proper environment for fertilization, and transports to transports it to the uterus. It has four parts: infundibulum, ampulla, isthmus, and intramural segment. Histologically, its wall is composed of mucosa, muscularis, and serosa from inside out. Mucosa is thrown into folds composed of epithelium and lamina propria. This is an HNE stain site showing mucosal folds. This slide shows section of uterine tube at the level of fimbria which has the most extensive mucosal folds. Mucosa consists of simple polymer epithelium which are which has two types of cells, darker staining secretory cells called as peg cells, which secrete tubal fluid, and ciliated cells, which are numerous and have kinosemia. The lamina propria consists of loose connective tissue. This slide shows mucosal folds and with cells of epithelium. 
This slide clearly shows peg cells and ciliated cells. The muscularis consists of two layers of smooth muscles, thicker inner circular and thinner outer longitudinal. Serosa is the peritoneum composed of loose connective tissue covered by simple squamous epithelium called mesothelium.